It is the show that shakes the Southland Clemson Sports Talk on a Monday afternoon. Always good to be back with you. And thank you for everybody who has subscribed, man. Over 500 subscribers already. Heading into week four of the season. I think my lofty goals of 1,000 subscribers before week five are probably, probably a little bit out of reach. Unless you do one thing. Head over and hit subscribe to our channel right now. 803-450-0086, text line, phone line, 803-450-0086. Coming up in hour two, William Qualkenbush will join the program. We've got audio today from Tiger Town, including Tony Elliott. Again, I know a lot of people out there frustrated by this Clemson Tiger offense. I mentioned earlier as well. Uh, we will also hear from some of you. We had plenty of calls over the weekend. Again, this is a unique college football season. I don't think anybody is denying that. Uh, one thing, though, that I, I do want to make sure that we hit on again, let's not forget, and it's incredible because we had Tommy Bowden on the program on Friday, and I just I can't help but think about the fact that Clemson and Troy faced off back in 2000. And 16, September the 10th, as a matter of fact. And that Clemson Tiger team survived 30 to 24. An ugly victory, but a victory. That was a number two ranked Clemson team. And again, that same Clemson Tiger football team with Deshaun Watson at the helm, would would go on to win the national championship. Now, that's that's key because Dabo Sweeney has said that you don't play your best football early. You shouldn't. Great teams get better. This team obviously struggling. But I, I think the, the key difference in that 2016 team uh, and this team is the fact that, and again, that 2016 team also beat Auburn on the road by six. That 2016 beat Georgia Tech by just 19. That 2016 team beat Louisville by six. They beat NC State in overtime. They beat Florida State by three. They lost to Pittsburgh by a point. On the last second field goal. They beat Virginia Tech in the ACC championship by seven. That's a team that went on to throw a goose egg up against Ohio State. 31 to nothing. And to get by Alabama on the last, quote, offensive play of the game. Winning is not always pretty. And I th there were photos... We've got them over on ClemsonSportsTalk.com from this past Saturday of K.J. Henry embracing James Skalski, of D.J. Uwe Ungale being hugged by Brian Brzee. Are there issues with this team? Roger that, Captain. 10-4. Copy. Yes. Is this team still talented enough to win a national title. Roger that. Copy. Yes. Defensively, they are as good as anybody in America. It's a, it's a championship level defense at this point. Confidence issues with, uh, I asked Tony Elliott after the game on, on, on Saturday about the mechanics. You know, mechanically, what is DJ doing wrong that he's seen? And again, this is all pre-tape before he gets a chance to watch the film. I mean, you can see DJ's throwing off of his back leg. That's part of the reason he's sailing the football. I mean, he's not stepping into every throw that he's making. And you got to be, you got to have a more aggressive approach, in my opinion, uh, in that regard at this level. And the other thing, you know, that I asked Dabo Sweeney was, look, man, if a team lines up, giving you that robber look with, with, essentially five guys deep and, and making you run the ball under, 
first off, you do have to hit some slants and some things underneath. And a couple of times Clemson, you know, hits wide outs or tight ends in the hands and they they drop the ball. That, you know, that isn't necessarily on on DJ. But even with the additional time that Clemson had, it was still incredible to me that the adjustments weren't there. And and I kind of asked Dabo Sweeney yesterday, you know, what take take us through what it's like to be a coach when you've prepared for X and now you are getting Y and you got to communicate amongst your offensive line coach. You got to communicate amongst your tight ends coach. You got to communicate amongst amongst your wide receivers, quarterback, running backs getting all those groups to gel and mesh and say, hey, this is what we thought we were doing. This is what we got to do. Let's pull it off. Now, to me, what I saw didn't pull it off as well as I would like to believe a great, great team could do it. But maybe that just goes to show the youth and inexperience that you actually have this year with a guy like DJ Uyungle at quarterback. Again, just a couple of games into his career. I mean, he, we expect him to be Trevor Lawrence, but he's not Trevor Lawrence. We expect them to be playing at the level Trevor Lawrence was playing at after multiple seasons. And I, I again, I think Trevor Lawrence was playing better as a freshman. But I can tell you that I had conversations here on the show that shakes the Southland. By the way, if you're watching the show today, thank you. Like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends and neighbors and your friends' neighbors. Ding the bell, ring the bell, whatever you got to do over on YouTube. We want to hear from you as well. Call a driven show. Let me let me fire that up because check this out. We got a new little URL for you. Check this out. Tinyurl.com slash Clemson Sports TV. How simple is that, Swatty? Always thinking. Always think. Not just not just a hat rack, ladies and gentlemen. Especially not just a Clemson Sports Talk hat rack. But again. I think some of these things are byproducts of the run, the amazing run that Clemson's been on, the expectation that any opponent that you face, you should obliterate. And that's just not always the case. It's a hard pill to swallow because you become accustomed to throwing it in cruise control. We'll hear from you, the listeners. People called in all weekend, 803-450-0086. We'll get to those calls right after this. Radio advertising can connect you.